Hello, my name is Carlos Riano from Queen's University, Belfast. And uh, in this presentation, we are going to present the paper GPU Accelerated Pedestrian Detection in the Edge, which has been uh, uh, done by Stephen McVeigh and myself. And uh, it has been accepted for publication in the HPC uh, 2020 conference. And we are recording this video for, uh, for that conference. OK, so this is the outline that we will follow during this presentation. First of all, we will introduce and motivate the, this work and the problems that we have seen. Then we will propose a solution for addressing those problems. After that, we will evaluate our uh, solution and compare it with the existing one. And then we will finish this presentation by presenting some uh, conclusions. So let's start then with the introduction. In this work, we will be working with a use case of uh, detecting people in video based systems. Usually, in this kind of systems, we use uh, deep learning algorithms in order to detect uh, people. There is a trend today of accelerating those algorithms by using graphic processing units. This reduces the execution time of these algorithms. And uh, uh, for this reason, uh, this technique uh, is very, very uh, standard nowadays. And usually, those uh, deep learning algorithms accelerated by GPUs are uh, run in powerful uh, devices or servers. So for instance, we are showing here a sample of a detection in a video frame. So we see here different uh, people and we see that each people detected has a bounding box around uh, each person. OK, so you see here different persons and a bounding box around all the persons detected. So the current approach is that cameras, as you can see in the figure in the right of this slide. So the cameras just uh, uh, capture, capture video frames, such as the one we have seen in the previous slide. Then those video frames are uh, sent through the network to a central facility. It could be a server, it could be uh, the cloud, it could be different things, but uh, it's a centralized facility. And here in this centralized facility is where uh, the, the frames are processed. So for the, this work, we wonder, can we improve this process? Uh, what can we do in order to, to, to make this process more, uh, more, uh, more not, not faster, but to improve it? So in this work, we propose using uh, edge computing that we will uh, introduce uh, next. So then uh, our proposed solution is basically using edge computing, uh, which is a new computer paradigm, which consists of uh, on processing the data at the edge of the network. So the task, instead of being performed in a centralized facility, are performed closer to where the, the data is captured. For instance, coming back to our example, where cameras were capturing frames and sending them through the network, what we, what we propose in this work is we are going to attach low power embedded devices to the cameras. So you see here, uh, this, this is the, in this figure we show by this square with the word GPU inside, we are referring to a low power embedded device with a GPU. And then what happens is that uh, instead of sending the frames directly to the central facility, we propose to preprocess uh, these uh, frames here in these uh, low power embedded devices before sending in through the network. 
and then in the in the central facility we can do additional processing for instance imagine that each camera captures each uh, own frames and detects people in those frames and then in the central facility what we can do is contextualizing uh, all those frames for instance the frames captured by one camera and the frames captured by another camera we could try to detect if one person appearing in the first camera is the same person appearing in the other camera this is usually referred to as uh, person tra tracking Case in this paper, in this work, we have used uh, the following low power embedded device with a GPU. It's an NVIDIA Jetson Nano that you could, can see here in this image. So it is a four core ARM CPU. Is, uh, the CPU is Tegra based. This, uh, this de device has a 128 core Maxwell GPU and it high, has four gigabytes of shared memory, the memory shared between the CPU and the GPU. As a baseline, we will use an, an HP MBI. Uh, the, the features of this uh, base uh, HP MBI are in the, in the paper. So next we are going to both evaluate and uh, also uh, explain in more detail uh, in what consists our solution. So initially, what we have done is just measure the, the algorithm we plan to use. We are going to use a, a very popular algorithm, which is called YOLO, Y-O-L-O. -O. And uh, first of all, we are going to measure how this uh, algorithm behaves in the baseline system, which is uh, an HP MBI. And as I have mentioned, the features of the, the specifications of this uh, uh, baseline uh, device are in the paper. And we are going to compare it with the same, uh, running the same algorithm in the Jetson Nano. And we have just explained the, the features of this Jetson Nano. So here in this image, what we are showing is uh, two things. We are showing the CPU utilization over time. So um, indeed, in, uh, actually we have two things here. We have the CPU utilization, but we also have the execution time. So the first thing we see is that regarding the execution time, we see that uh, the, in the baseline, this sample takes less than 50 seconds. Uh, the, the sample is just a video. Is is detailed. Uh, the example is detailed in the in the paper. So it's just uh, processing a video frame for detecting people in the uh, in in the video. Okay. So the base uh, system takes, uh, as I was mentioning, 45 seconds, something around that. And if we run the same in the Jetson Nano we see that e, this device is mm, less powerful and it takes much more time. In terms of CPU utilization, we see that the base device uses 100% uh, uh, CPU utilization. Notice that here, uh, this system has several cores. That's why it can go uh, uh, over 100. So 100 means that it, it is using one core uh, 100%, but if it has more cores, it can use more. And in the case of the Jetson Nano, it's the same. So, for instance, uh, is using here, well, an average of 50, and then it goes down. So, it could use, at it has four cores, this could be, for the Jetson Nano, this could be 400% of, up to 400% of utilization. So, we will see that we have in the Jetson Nano, this is taking a lot of time, but we have plenty of room in order to improve the CPU utilization. So we can uh, potentially uh, improve this, uh, this algorithm. Regarding the GPU utilization, in the base system, we have a discrete uh, GPU, while in the, uh, in the base system, we have a, a discrete GPU with, with uh, its uh, separate memory 
and in the JSON Nano, as we have seen, we have a shared memory. So in the base system, we see that the GPU is used 100%. So in this case, 100% is the, the maximum. And in the case of the JSON Nano, we see that at the beginning, uh, it's not completely used. And then after some time, it's, it starts to be using almost 100% also. And here we are showing the memory utilization. In the case of the baseline system, we have that for the CPU, the host memory, we are using 20%. For the uh, GPU memory, we are using uh, all the GPU memory. And in the Jetson Nano, remember it's a shared memory between the CPU and the GPU. We see that we have a maximum of 8%, 80% of memory utilization. So the first optimization we have proposed is reducing the resolution of uh, the frames. By doing that, we also reduce the execution time. For instance, we have here in the y-axis the time taken for uh, applying the algorithm, mm, reducing the, the resolution. And we see that as we reduce the resolution, we also reduce the execution time. In yellow, we have the time taken by the original uh, uh, based uh, uh, test system. So we can see that, as expected, as we reduce the resolution, we have uh, we reduce also the execution time. But what, ha what happens then? What happens is that probably we are losing precision. So for that reason, we have also measured the precision while we for different resolutions. And we see that uh, the, the, the precision is more or less uh, 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 the same as the, as the original uh, one in the test base. But here, once we uh, pass this threshold of 300 of 20 uh, resolution, then it just goes down. So probably some value uh, written here would be a good, uh, a good one. So if we combine those uh, two uh, conclusions, so if we see that uh, by reducing the, 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 the resolution, we reduce the execution time and uh, until some threshold, we are able to maintain the precision. So we can conclude that a resolution of 320, it's a good trade-off between reduction in time and uh, similar precision. So this will be the first optimization we have done in this work. We have applied this uh, uh, this technique in the algorithm, and this has been done has been done in the edge device. So the camera has captured the video, and the edge device has performed this uh, uh, algorithm with this optimization, obtaining similar uh, execution time. The second optimization that we propose is do we need actually to process all the frames. So we think that uh, the answer is that we don't need to process all the frames because usually uh, cameras operate at a high frame per second. So if we don't know process all the frames, probably we are going to get similar results. So here we are showing again in, uh, in orange, we have the baseline, which is the precision obtained by the uh, HPM by uh, machine. Then in green we have uh, what uh, could be seen as an acceptable precision. And then in yellow we have uh, this experiment in which we do not process all the frames. For instance, here uh, one means when when n is equal to one means that we are processing all the frames. One frame every one frame. When n is equal to 2, for instance here, this means that we are processing one frame every two frames. And so on, for instance here, with 10, it means that we are processing one frame every 10 frames. So as we could see here, uh, more or less the precision is maintained. And, and uh, again, once we pass a given threshold, in this case, once we pass 4, then the precision, uh, it, uh, it goes down. So what we have done is uh, assume that the optimal value is just processing one frame every four frames, which means n equal four in this case. 
now what we are going to do is showing the results when uh, combining both optimizations, reduced resolution and not processing every frame. In this case, if we see the CPU utilization, we can see that now the execution time is more is similar to the to the baseline. And in terms of CPU utilization, uh, it has uh, uh, doubled from uh, the previous uh, uh, algorithm. But as you see, we have still uh, plenty of room for uh, utilizing completely uh, our CPU. Regarding the GPU, uh, we see that here uh, have a, on average a similar GPU utilization as before with the Jetson Nano, the, uh, the, the baseline has not changed, it's the same as before. And then for the memory, what we can see is that uh, the, in this case we are uh, again the, for the baseline, uh, the values are the same. In blue we have the GPU memory and in orange we have the CPU memory of the baseline. Those are the same results as before. What changes here is the green line, which are the, the which is the memory utilization. And in this case, remember it's shared memory. So this means this is memory utilized by the CPU and also by the GPU. And we see here on average, we will show this uh, later on the summary, that on average we are using 20% uh, less memory. Remember that before we were using uh, much more memory. Okay, so now we are going to uh, compare uh, the initial algorithm uh, against the optimized one in order to see more clearly the, 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 the results. So remember that the, when we refer to the optimized algorithm, we mean that we have applied the first optimization, which is reducing the, the resolution of the frames and we have processed one frame every four frames. And we have applied both of these optimizations at the edge. So the camera has captured the video frames and those video frames has been processed in the Jetson Nano in, the, in this edge device uh, near the camera. Okay, so what we can see here is uh, in terms of execution time, uh, we can see that uh, when we compare the initial uh, uh, results for the Jetson Nano with the results uh, of uh, with the Jetson Nano using the the optimized algorithm, we see that we ha uh, are uh, we have a speed up of uh, 2.25, which is great. And we in terms of execution time, we also see that it's similar to the baseline. Okay, in terms. In terms of average uh, CPU utilization, we can see that uh, it has doubled the, the, the CPU utilization, but if you see, we are using 65% uh, of uh, on average of the GPU utilization, so we have still room in this sense. So this, this should be no problem. And then in terms of average GPU utilization, so we have a similar GPU utilization uh, as before. Yeah, sorry, I did a mistake uh, later. I was saying that we have reduced the, the, GPU, the GPU utilization, but uh, it's the, the memory GPU what we have reduced. Okay, so in terms of GPU utilization, we have a similar utilization as we can see here. Uh, yeah. So, and next we are going to see a, a comparison of memory. So the average CPU memory used by the baseline system and by the uh, GPU memory baseline system are in blue. And in orange, we have the initial uh, memory use in the Jetson Nano, in the Edge device, and in green, we have the optimized one. And as we can see here, we are reducing by 25% the utilization, the memory, the, the memory uh, utilization. Okay, so that's also a great uh, result. Okay, then, so conclusions. So in this paper, we have shown uh, a way in order to uh, improve the GPU accelerated pedestrian detection. We have proposed using an algorithm for preprocessing the video frames at the edge. 
for uh, allowing such pre-processing in a real time and uh, without uh, uh, maintaining the, the, the performance, what we have done is applying some optimization such as reduce the resolution of the frames, don't not process all the frames. And with that, we have obtained uh, 2.25 speed up over the initial algorithm. We have doubled the CPU utilization, the GPU utilization is similar, and we have reduced by 20% the memory uh, utilized in the device. Yeah, and that's all. Many thanks for your attention. If you have any question, uh, we will be happy to, to answer uh, all the questions. Many thanks. And yeah, see you. Bye bye.